check it, check it, check it, check it, check, check it out. Let's go. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Erica. And this is Sherry. And this is Generation, Generation Conversation. Conversation. Where new school beats old school. Old school beats new school. Sometimes y'all got it. Sometimes. But anyway, I hope everyone is having a great week or had a great week. Whatever day of the week you decide to listen to us. I hope you happy guys holidays. have happy holidays. Yes. yes, happy holidays. Um, of course, we gotta start off with our shout outs. Shout out to Geeky Consultant. If any of you all were tuned into our live, we shouted them out. That is our creative team, the backbone, the spine, the heart of generation conversation. Yes, love it you guys. Is. Yes, it is. And they do a lot more than social media marketing. They do resumes, they do um, website hosting, website development, and a lot of other stuff. So yep. check them out. Yes, check them out. Um, another shout out, of course, as always, to Weird Kid. Hey shout kid. out to you. Hey, kid. I want to shout out um, someone who actually gave us a shout out last week on, um, she has a um, social media account called Positive Vibes Only Podcast. And she shouts out, she shouts out um, podcasts that give, you know, positive vibes and that, you know, only are doing positive things. So we appreciate that. And we thank you. And she, we call her our yeah. spiritual friend, Positive Vibes Only Podcast. Check it out. Shout out to you. Um, and I also want to shout out, talk about our Spotify wrapped. Um, so what Spotify does and other streaming platforms, they condense all of maybe your albums, artists, and even podcasts that you've listened to throughout the year into a little list, a little summary. Um, so we got the chance to have it as a podcaster point of view. Um, and we saw that we've reached four countries. Shout out to whatever three countries those yes, are. Yes, yes. Shout yes. out to y'all. Send me a plane ticket. <laughs> and then shout out to um, people who have also shared that we were in their Spotify rap who were, as their top podcast. Yeah. Um, and then our Spotify rap also mentioned that we dropped 539 minutes of content over nine episodes. And of oh. those of those 539 minutes, 500 of them, I'm sure, came from our Versus episode, because that was a long oh, yeah. episode. <laughs> but that was, like, the best episode. <laughs> but, yes, that is pretty cool. So shout out to Spotify, shout out to our listeners, and all the support, as always. So tell them what we're doing here, Erica, because we're doing something different again. Yes. We changed like Erica's hair. <laughs> we keep on every time now, baby. <laughs> but, um, so we're doing the podcast via Zoom. And I'll just let you know, it ain't easy. Okay. Oh my God, I don't know if we'll ever do this again. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm away for work. But we still wanted to give you guys content. She left me, y'all. She left me. Oh, you'll be okay. You're not alone, though. You have daddy. Yeah. But <laughs> you left me anyway. Um, yeah. also, also, at the end of this episode, we're going to actually have a game. So stay around because it's going to be funny. And it's yes. very relevant to our topic. So tune in. Tune in. Mm -hmm. Stay okay. tuned. So speak. What did she say? Stay tuned. Yes. Yes, y'all sh always should be staying tuned, but specifically stay tuned. Right, right. Um, but so what about our topic? What is our topic today, Sherry? So my name is Mom. <laughs> hey, our, topic, fast this time. <laughs> our topic today, we're episode 13 and it's called Can You Hear Me Now? And uh -huh. it yeah. is exactly this is about communication, old school and new school communication. And actually this way or method of communicating that we're doing right now is a very new school method of communication. Oh, yeah. That uh, is the day we live in. But what we're gonna prob what we're trying to see is if communication is more effective now or was it more effective back then? You be yeah. the judge. 
<laughs> so what were some old school forms of communication? Well, before I tap into that, I do want to kind of give my spiel on communication and how I feel um, about it. And I'm sure you kind of kind of worn out on me talking about it, Ma. But I just learned that communication is so vital and so important. And not enough people know how to communicate. Um, and not even just in like relationships and friendships, but in the workforce and things. Um, and I guess the progression over the years has like made a way big disconnect in how to communicate. So um, I just feel as though it's very important, but it's also not appreciated enough, not considered enough, um, not valued enough right. at all. Period. Right. And I so, think, I think, good communication to people is subjective. I think some people think they're good communicators and other people, literally no way. <laughs> I'm telling you, and other people think that they don't. I think some people think that when you communicate too much, that that's a problem, um, that, you know, you just need to know what you need to know and that should be enough. Whereas other people think that that's not enough communication. So I think that's subjective. Yeah. Which is yeah. what causes definitely, problems. Right. And then I feel like, like I was saying, how in relationships, friendships, um, excuse me, the workforce, like those all require different types of communication. And I don't think people realize that either. Right. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll own it. I ain't the greatest communicator in like my relationships and with my people and stuff. But at work, oh, I'm going to over communicate the heck out of everything because. It's not even my job in jeopardy. It's lives, people's lives in jeopardy. So it's right. bigger than me, you know? That's a good um, point. So, yeah, it's just, I don't know. People just don't see it like that. And I feel like they take the communication techniques they use at home or with others, try to use those same techniques at work. It's not right. the same. Right. It doesn't relay over. Stop doing it, okay? Right. And I think that's the part of that that's the problem is because of texting, because texting oh, is yeah. like a shorter version of talking. So yeah. I think they end up talking that way as well. And I yeah. need the long version. You know what I mean? I don't need right. anything to be elaborate. Right. Right. Like, what does this mean? Like you'll get to it. Okay. When will you get to it? How will you get to it? Right. And where are you going to get to it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. But um, so tell us about some forms of communication from old school, Ma. So we had uh, an enormous amount of communication in our day. Um, we had genuine face-to-face -face communication, a lot more than what they have now. If we wanted to talk to somebody, we went to their house, we knocked on their door and we talked to them. We met them somewhere and we talked to them. We called them on our telephones and not the cell phones, but we called them on the house phone and we talked to them. Um, mm -hmm. The house phone, uh, we had pagers. Pagers are little devices that I think even doctors, right, Erica, still have pagers? No, we just have little trap phones. Oh, okay. So we have pagers, which are little devices, for those of you that don't know, little devices that you can call that number. Every device had a phone number. You would call that number and you would put in your phone number or it would pick up that you call that that from that number. And the other person that called you, their number would come scroll across the little screen. When I say little, I mean very little screen. And then you had to call them back. Now, if they put 911 at the end of it, that means you had to call them back in a hurry. See, I'll be misusing that. I'll be like, 911, there's this hot guy. And that's the thing. You, you, you started learning who misused it. So then you would not, <laughs> rush to call them back and in calling them back you know you could call them back from um your home phone or you would call them back from a pay phone pay phone is a public phone um that anybody could use for at the time when i was coming up it was 10 cent then i think it went up to 50 cent something like that i don't even know but um in this day and age those phones would have been eliminated right now had they not already been eliminated because of corona because those phones were disgusting. Disgusting. Anybody could use them. They probably had all kinds of germs on them. Um, but we didn't think about that. You know, we just used them. 
which is why mm -hmm. our immune systems are probably better than your immune system. But we're not going to go there right now. We're, we're just going to keep going. <laughs> um, and then another form of communication, we always had email. E well, not always, but email when email came around, we used emails, um, faxes. Faxes was a way of communicating. And I guess that's about it. Eventually, we did have cell phones, nothing like the cell phones we have now. They were just used to call somebody and they weighed mm -hmm. five pounds, but then that was it. What about you? Well, I feel like cell phones um, just took over all of that. Like it combined all of that stuff into one little mini computer, you know? Um, Cause that's where we do it all. We email, we text, we make phone calls. So you got your pager, you got your computer, you got your phone, you got all of that in one device. Um, you know, we got laptops and iPads and smart watches. I feel like that may have been the latest new gadget um, that I can think of. But yes, uh, and then like even on the phone, social media, people use that as a tool to communicate. Um, they use uh, group me's, they use WhatsApp. So it's all these apps, applications in the phone that they use to communicate. So the phones are it, you know, that's that's where it all is. But it was, a, so it sounds like what's become of communication is less face-to-face. -face right. And, you know, which to me breaks down actual communication. Yes. And I think they try to alleviate that in a sense with the FaceTime or the video right. calls. But I mean, it kind of, it's 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 better than the phone calls and the text right. for sure, but right. it's still still not the same, right? You know, right? Yeah. Um, now, I'm, I I am certain I am certain that communicating via text or on an app or any anywhere where you have to type in what you're trying to say is definitely taken away from the true communication because you don't have facial expressions, you don't have body language, you don't have just the person being there, you know, and that makes a difference right. as part of communicating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it definitely has to affect it. Oh yeah, like a lot of text messages are so misconstrued mm -hmm. um, or just not understood. Right. I'll find myself throwing in exclamation parts, just exclamation marks, just to make sure you know I'm happy to talk to you. Right. Or you know I'm happy in that moment. You know, like how else am I gonna say it? Like, right. you know, I find myself looking at texts that I type up, and I'm like, dang, like I sound mad or I sound dry. Like, let me right. spice it. Add an exclamation mark or add a little LOL. Like, or an emoji. Like, for what? Emoji. Or an emoji. Yeah, we use like, emojis to express how we feel. That's ridiculous. Right. That's yeah, I mean. and I mean, most of the time, if I say LOL, LMAO, I ain't laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I am not laughing. It's just for some little razzle-dazzle mm. or a little, oh, that was that was cute in my head. Mm. But yeah, yeah, that's terrible. But yeah, text messaging is my least favorite, favorite form of communication. So speaking of that, what would you say is your go-to form of communication? Would you say phone call, text, social media, face-to-face, -face, email? Face to face, absolutely first for me. I would rather talk to somebody face to face because, you know, I want to see them. I want to see mm -hmm. how they react to what I have to say. I want to see, um, you know, I want to see how they feel because you can see how right. someone feels. So right. I want to get all that. So definitely face to face. And then after face to face, if I can't do face to face, then telephone because at least. You know, you might hear a sigh, or you might hear a laugh, or you might hear, you know, sorrow, grief, pain, whatever, yeah. you know. Right, right. Yeah, that would be the same for me, for sure. Face-to-face, -face, like, it is, I mean, and it sucks because, like, texting, I do get texting, it's so convenient. It's very convenient, and, you know, we get wrapped up in our lives and doing things, always on the go. We always feel like we got to be on the go, mm -hmm. but... Um, which makes texting so so quick and easy, you know? Yeah. But I do cherish the face-to-face -face moments I have with people. And that's just how you build relationships. I'm not going to get to know you through just texting, you know? Like, yeah, we can have a few laughs and share some good combos, but face-to-face -face is it. And then after that, like you said, 
It's more oh, genuine. Face to face is more genuine. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we asked our um, listeners, and uh, most of them said face to face. And then after face to face, they said text. And I think because text is just so convenient. I mean, yeah. it was. It's really the, probably the greatest inventions text messages text message. but see i think when text messaging was invented it was created for times specific times when you just had something quick to say um that yeah. you had to relay something quick and you didn't it didn't require a phone call you know like i'm on my way or um i'll call you right back or something like that right. but now it's turned into a true form i've seen text messages that's been like 11 teen lines you know right, what i mean that's right. that's that's a com- that's a co- that's a phone call that's right. a phone call you know what and i mean and then what frustrates me now is like people who are terrible texters like i'm not a1 grade 1 texting you know I, i'm pretty decent but people who are just super dry but then they're like great in person it's just so frustrating cuz it's like you know i can't see you every day we both have our lives so texting sometimes we need that and then they don't be liking to talk on the phone. They, you know, it's, it's either all the way or no way. Like yeah. <laughs> they're terrible texts, but they're just bomb people in person. I don't know. It's just weird. It is. And I guess texting, it's just a requirement to not use any kind of grammar, correct grammar, any kind of punctuation, any kind of anything that you learned in English class all 12 years of your high school because that is just totally not used in Texas, which is another reason why messages are misconstrued. It means something different a lot of times when you don't put a period or it means something different when you don't put a comma or it means something different when you spell a word totally wrong. It really means yeah. something different. And autocorrect be jacking people up. You know what I mean? <laughs> be like, I didn't mean to say that. You know, so... Right. And then, too, I'm not going to lie, like, if I'm doing something and I look just quick glance at a text message, I could totally read it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I mean, that's on me. Like, sometimes I'll read it the wrong way and won't go back and reread it and just respond off of what I thought it was. Right. I've had many instances of that. Right. Or you have you have your delayed responders which are oh, people yeah. who don't respond until a long time ago and then they respond to something that was said earlier and you have no idea what they're talking about so now you got to go back and read your message to see what the heck they're talking about and they just expect you to know like i don't know or my thing is like people i mean you know i like if i type something important in a text message thread you can scroll back up and look for it like if it's like an address or something, don't keep that's a, that's a good thing up to text too. You know, right. you can just scroll up and look at stuff. Right. People will like send me the address again, send me their number right. again. Oh, baby, right. that was two days ago. You can go and right. look. Right. Except for me and your conversations, Erica, it takes way too long to oh, look girl. for anything in our threads because they are way too. I, long. I love how Apple and I'm an iPhone <laughs> users how they have the column now where you can Search. like you know be memeing it up and like sending links, but you can have like. You can go and scroll through your pictures, your screenshots, right. your links. Right. That, that's that's cool. why that's probably all my storage on my phone is our conversation. Right, right. <laughs> and then you can search. You can use a search bar in your messages to search for specific words. So that works. Eh, I don't really care for that. <laughs> it don't do be getting that. a job done. I do it. It helps. Mm. <laughs> so, um, since we're talking about texting, when did you get your first cell phone? Huh. Oh, probably when I was mm, in my 20s. Mm, yeah, probably. <clears throat> I don't think I had a cell phone as a teenager. Cause, and if I did, it was like 19. I can't even remember. It was, it, I was an adult. I was yeah. an adult. Yeah. I had a pager though. <laughs> <laughs> so how old were you when you got your pager? Um, I probably was maybe 15 or 16 when I got my pager. So that, I guess okay. that's still considered old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I was... Was it eighth grade I got my phone? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It was eighth grade. And, and, and I the, felt all behind. Right. You were. And, and we, you know, waited. Because I didn't feel like uh, that we should get it for you until you needed it. 
you didn't need it until then. I mean, somebody was always home. So that was when you started doing a lot of after school stuff. So mm-hmm. then, you know, we were like, okay, she'll have a phone when she's ready. So we can come pick her up or, you know, if something happens or whatever. But when I was coming up, we really never needed it because we had public phones all over the place. Right, right. You know, the, the pay- and then, yeah, we still had the house phone um, up until that point. So, like, if I was at home and wanted to use the phone, I just used the house phone. Right. But like you said, it was not until I started doing things outside of the home that I needed a cell phone. Right, right. Um, no, a lot me, of people... Let me tell you this story real quick. Oh, gosh. <laughs> One time... I was using a public pay phone to call somebody and I put in my money and I don't know what happened, but all the change from the pay phone start coming out. Really? So yes, I had my jacket hold it, catching it. I had my book bag catching it and I just caught all of it and walked away. <laughs> oh my gosh. I that thought I was rich. hilarious. That is. That, I remember that. <laughs> what did you do with the candy. money, Sherry? Oh, God. Candy. I'm sure it was a lot of candy involved. Oh, my gosh. That's why you got them fillings in your mouth now. Probably so. Because it was it was all quarters. I mean, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? So Yeah. That's I, wish, true. I wish I would have remembered how much it was, but it was a lot. It just kept coming. It kept coming. Dang. Yep. That was your lucky day, man. And you wasted it on some candy. It was. <laughs> um yeah a lot of our viewers they chimed in on um when they got their first cell phone it was a lot of different answers um some that surprised me somebody said eight and i said in my head what <laughs> like no that's, that's that's true that's what's happening now well uh, yeah yeah somebody said um a lot of people said sixth grade several people Grade school, fourth grade, middle school. I don't really see um, like high school. Yeah. A lot of people started in middle school right. or early high school. Um, somebody said seventh grade, then I sat on it and it broke. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody said when I was 15, I could pay my own bill. You could pay your own bill at 15? I guess so. He was working. Right. So. Yeah, someone said the 11th grade, my grandma was super strict. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, just yeah. Uh, the evolution of the phone, man. And I feel like my generation, like my age specifically, like we have seen it really. I mean, y'all have seen it evolve, but like just the cell phone, like. The cell phone itself. Yes, like it's just crazy. Because I didn't even think to, I don't know, like. What was it like next tails and flip phones? Right. When, so it wasn't like, oh, you know, anything fancy going on in the phone. You just had the little basic games, you know. Right, right. If you know the social media, you got on MySpace right. on the desktop. But and you could get on the web, you could get on the um the web, the internet, but it was really very slow and very weird looking. You know what I mean? And you actually So had- wait, you know, like, we have to talk about this phone. You know we have to talk about your dinosaur phone, Mom. My pink phone? Her pink phone is legendary, y'all. Because we talked so, about it in another episode, remember? I know, but this is the perfect time. The <laughs> dinosaur pink phone, like... Let me tell you something you that about phone. that pink phone. I had that phone forever, and, and I didn't get rid of it because it broke. That phone worked fine. It has... If I go charge that phone right now, that phone will, will start up and be like, what's up? Who you want? <laughs> Seriously, that phone is 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 amazing. And the only reason, because my kids kept laughing at me about it and telling me I needed to get a smartphone, and I, you know, I fought the struggle for a long time. And then I went to the dollar store one day, and the cash, the guy at the cash register, he just started laughing at my phone. And I was like, oh dang, that was it. I was like, okay, fine, I'll just go get another phone. He thought but it was let so the funny. opinion of a stranger dictate your no, choice. It's just, I guess it just it just showed me that okay, it's not just your kids, they just not doing this. So, Girl, so that phone was hilarious. Okay. It like, looked like a uh a, a, a blackberry, but it was yeah, pretty, it did. It like did. But the, the buttons were so small right. and the screen was mad small. Yeah, it was. It, it was for using. 
what a phone is supposed to be used for to call people. But now that you have your iPhone, you do more than just call. You go on there laughing at all the memes on Instagram and sending them corny things to me. Oh, they corny now? Okay. Okay. You know, I'll tell you when I think they're corny. (laughs) So how long could you go without your phone? However long I'm, I'm, I'm asked to go. Especially okay. if someone like wants to place a wager, I could go forever without it. As long as I know, contact with you. Well, as long as I know my, my kids and my husband and you know my family is okay. Life changes every day. Okay. And <laughs> we could be okay one second and not okay the next. Well, call call me on the home phone. Or call send, send me an email. Oh, send you an email. Yeah. Or I'll write you a letter. Yeah. Just when I figure out where to get stamps from. <laughs> it's called the post office, girl. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um how long can you go without a phone, darling? I mean, I feel like I could go, I could go a long time, but do I want to? You've done, well, you've done the whole shutdown social media. Yeah, social media is one thing. Like, I could, I, could, I could set my phone somewhere and, like, leave it for a while. Like, yeah. as long as I have my watch on and see if somebody is calling me. Oh, well, see, that's like, the same, though. That, does, that doesn't count. No, but listen to what I'm saying, though. Like, being plugged into your phone, like, I could do that. Like, I can unplug from my phone. But if it's, that's what my emergency is. I'm not going to shout well, no, I do check my email every day. But I check my email every day on my phone. So my phone is really my life. Like, as far as, like, I have all my reminders on there, all my notes on my... Okay, I'm not going to tell you everything I have on there because you <laughs> might try to break it to my phone. But I have a lot of stuff on my phone. It's bigger than, like, social media and all that stuff. Like, mm. I don't know. Yeah. So, so not, I don't know. So your but, answer is not long, right? Maybe, like... That's your answer. Yeah, not long. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Some people said zero. Somebody said zero minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said 37 seconds. <laughs> you are so dramatic. Somebody, somebody just put that emoji that like, like you smell something funky. <laughs> like <but> turn up. <laughs> somebody said, if I didn't have to worry about work a month. Okay. Someone said all the way through till next lifetime. Phones bring too much stress and anxiety. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Someone said if with good company, then hours. Oh, good. That's a good answer. Yeah. Yeah. Someone said an hour. Someone said a long time. Someone said forever. Mm-hmm. I don't know, y'all. Y'all, I don't think y'all could go as long as y'all think. That phone, man, just, I mean, if you use it like I use it, like my phone is like a business model. Like, yeah. It's like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it is. I think it is a difference between if you say, how long can you go without your phone for social media as opposed to how long can you go, you know, without your phone, period. Right, right. Because I think that if you're not using it to look at the news, the internet, social media, whatever then, you know, that's good. But if you, I mean, that's really good. But, and as long as you're just using it for like other features, like your notes, right. your calendar, right. stuff like that. Yeah. Because you guys that's definitely right. don't call people. You definitely don't call people anymore. I know. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't know. I'll be trying. I don't know. It's just calling. It's just, we just got so used to it. Like just to text. So let me shoot this text. Like, I don't know. Mm. I like to hear people's voices. I like to hear their voices. Some people's voices are annoying. Mm. (laughs) I'm kidding. But, okay, so we talked about, you know, cell phones and text messaging. What about, like, communication in the workforce? Yeah, so communication in the workforce (laughs) is very um, concerning to me because people leave a lot to be assumed mm-hmm. and that's terrible and let me tell you what one thing about communication and workforce that really drives me crazy everybody wants to take the short route everybody wants to use acronyms for everything mm-hmm. and they expect you to know what they are i spend half the day looking up acronyms to, to figure out what the heck it means i don't have time for that just tell me what you're talking about 
And I guess they call themselves saving time by writing this email with a, with a bunch of acronyms. That drives me bananas. So I don't like that. Um, some people, like we said, some people even send in emails. They send emails like they text, which are not complete mm -hmm. sentences, which are not, you know, understandable or things like that. So that drives me crazy. Um, in the workforce, you need to be really clear about what you're saying, what you expect as, you know, from me, um, mm -hmm. state your questions. You know, sometimes people will send an, an email and just say something and I'll say, okay, you, you haven't asked me anything. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. There's a lot to be assumed with terrible. those things. It's terrible. So I think that there needs, there needs to be some kind of communication classes that everybody is required to take and pass. Mm -hmm. And this goes across all workplaces, not just specifically mine, not specifically yours, but anybody, anybody works, works place should have good communication. Do you feel as though communication in the workforce has gotten worse? Yes, Since absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and that is because, you know, there was a time in in the workplace where if something was said, they would come up to you and say it, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, they, they, they may do that, but they're going to follow it up with an email. And I get why, because they're trying to cover themselves, you know what I mean? They're writing. So that, right. right, so that they can say it was said or whatever the case is, but it's just not as clear. Right. Yeah, I get that. It's it's so awful. And like, I just was talking to someone today, like nursing, going into the nursing profession. I've had plenty of jobs in the past, but I feel like it wasn't always a team effort in the jobs I've held in the past. Um, but it's such a huge team effort in healthcare. It's crazy. Yeah. And people don't communicate. And they be looking at me crazy when I be communicating. Right. Like, like right. I'm in your face. I'm asking you something. I, I'm not about to go away for five minutes. I'm wanting you to answer my question right now. Like, what's the issue? So, and then I'll be like, <laughs> it's so funny because I like, I try to over communicate because I want to be all the grounds to be covered. And I just be thinking like, hey, like how does everybody else go about the day? Like, how do they survive? Like, right. am I the only one doing right. this? Right. But I do talk to some nurses who they do the same thing. Like, and then for us too, it's about covering our license, covering ourselves. Right. Because, so I always extra clarify. And I mean, we were taught that in nursing school, but once you get to, to the field, you see how much that's not done. Um, like verbal read back or mm -hmm. just um, clear, asking clarifying questions. And that's just, they just be looking at me like I'm crazy. And I just be like, okay, I don't really care. I just want to know, is this patient going to surgery? Like, right. and right. this is so crazy how many things can be avoided or how many complications there are because of miscommunication. Right. Like, I feel like I spend most of my day as a secretary, right. just communicating all across the board. Like, why is it taking 35 minutes to discharge the patient home? Right. I knew he was being discharged three weeks ago. Like, yeah. it just blows my mind each time. And I'm just like, I really be wanting to ask them, like, do you not know how to communicate? Like right. a serious, legit question. Like, it's a yes or no. Like, I don't think you do, but I just want to hear it from your mouth. Right. It's just so frustrating. I got a question for you. Do you think there's a difference between communicating between men and women? I think there's a difference. I'm not sure what it is exactly. Um, that's a good question. I think... Well, I feel as though because women are, of course, more emotionally involved into things. Um, so what we feel is necessary to communicate, men don't right. feel that need. Right. Um, or they might pacify a lot of things or just just kind of add a lot of assumptions to things. Right. Um, it's kind of what I can say. What do you think? Um, I think that there is a difference between... Um, communicating with men and communicating with women. I think women tend to over-communicate um, for the most part, of course, not in every situation, but um, they tend to over-communicate and men tend to under-communicate. Um, I don't know why, I just think it is. I've just seen that in, in, in life, that that seems to be the case. 
and um, talking to people it seems like it's always an issue in marriages. It seems like it's always mm-hmm. an issue in relationships, um, workplaces, things like that. So, you yeah. Know. Yeah, that is true. Mm-hmm. Like, they just be chilling. Like, this is not a big deal to you. And exactly. they were like, so much, like I said, so much can be avoided if you just communicate. Like, mm-hmm. Everything is always assumed. I right. feel like with men. But it's, you can't, you can't assume stuff. You no, just can't. that's dangerous. It's too dangerous. But I feel like we, we um, fall short of that too sometimes. We assume that people may know how we feel or they should know how we feel. Right. And they don't, they're not mind readers. Right. Um, so, okay, did you have anything else to share with the workforce? Because we could jump right back in to relationships. No, and good. No, we're on that topic. Yep. So communication and relationships. Um, one thing that I was thinking about is, and when I say relationships, I don't necessarily mean like, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife. I mean, in any kind of relationship. One thing that I think we don't do as parents that we should do is teach communication. I think we just assume that the kids should know how to communicate. And I really think that it probably should be something that's taught. You should teach the child how to communicate. You should teach them, you know, how to speak, how to relay their feelings, how to say what they mean, mean what they say, you know, this stuff. And, And, you know, I don't think that's something that, like I said, that many parents do. We just assume it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's big. And we had this conversation the other day where, you know, I, I like I said, I could communicate in the workforce, but like communicating my emotions, my feelings is, is a big, big struggle for me. Right. Um, because, I mean, you know, I wasn't really taught and right. I can't blame you because I'm sure you weren't taught. Right. <laughs> and then it's just like a cycle, you know? Right. And um, so, you know, we kind of have this hardening in surface right because we don't know how to get those emotions or feelings out so it comes off as like i don't care or right. i'm just mean right um for lack of better words i do this right. nasty stuff right. but um right. yeah so it is something i think will progress uh, i i want to say uh i was gonna say i'll progress and get better but i don't know because then you got technology that's making it worse but then you have the people who realize that yo, like, this is not good. I need to teach right, my children right, how to communicate. Right. Um, so what's the battle? I mean, that's what the biggest thing in relationships, that difference between relationships, platonic, um, romantic, and then relationships in the workforce, there's emotions involved in those right. relationships, even with your friends, with your family. Right. right. You got that love for people. Right. And it's important to know how to express that. Right, you know? right. And I think that, um, I think that a good relationship has communication where you could pretty much say what you feel and 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 it not be taken the wrong way or out of context right. or even you know in a way to offend someone you know yeah. i think you got, it has to be somebody that understands this is just me expressing how i feel i'm not i don't mean anything more than that you know what i mean right. i think that's a good and i think yeah, sorry to cut you off, but I think the biggest thing too is like respecting people's feelings. Right. Just because you don't understand right. why they feel the way they feel, you can't negate that they feel that way. Like that's always been my struggle dealing with people. Right. It's just, you know, I get called emotional, dramatic because I feel a way about something, but right. because you don't understand it doesn't mean I, that feeling doesn't exist in me. Right. Like, I still feel that way no matter if it's irrational or not, like, right. that's how I feel. Right. So, so people have to learn to respect others' um, emotions, and we just have to learn how to nicely voice our feelings and emotions, too, you know? Right, and so part of is. communication is that it's just, again, not what you say, how you, but also how you say it, mm-hmm. um, you know, and you know, even body gestures has yeah. plays a big role in communication and people don't realize that, you know, I could say one thing with a smile on my face and then I could turn around and say the same exact thing with a frown on my face and it'll come right. across totally different. So, right. um, you know, those things make a difference. And also in communication, it's not just about talking, but communication also is about comprehending. Yes, do not talk to respond Right. To understand. Right. So, you know, you talk to somebody and you could tell they're not even hearing anything you're saying. All they're thinking about is what they're going to say. 
I do that sometimes myself, but you know, you have to understand and listen and hear what people right. are saying. I said talk. I'm sorry, but I meant listen. Listen. Right. Listen to, right. Listen yeah. 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 So that's important. Um, so what do you think about a relationship? Like, what is your number one, I guess, it, you have to have, as far as communication, what is the one thing that you have to have in a relationship as far as communication? Um, honesty, of okay. course. Like, like, I appreciate people who tell me stuff and I don't ask, you know? Mm -hmm. Just, like, being open and honest. Mm -hmm. Just, um, that's very big. And also, talking on the phone, <laughs> if we can't see each other in person, person like talking on the phone as opposed to texting like no. like I said before I don't feel like we can really build anything um via text like you know I can't really get to know you like I would like to if we're gonna progress in a relationship through text I just you know, I don't think that's possible and it's funny because you know when I was younger and dating you know you like somebody you'd be on the phone you would fall asleep on the phone with them you wake yeah. up and the phone is going eh, eh, but yeah eh. like that's crazy because I was I mean and then I don't know if I put it in my mind like oh that was high school like we talked on the phone all the time and now it's like texting like I don't know because I got busier with my life or if we just got away from that but yeah we used to do that high school and mm -hmm. middle school just be on the telephone yeah be so, on the telephone yep yeah, yeah. I don't know. I know. It's a lot to communicate in. I mean, like I say, I'm not great at communicating relationships. I'm working on it. Right. It's difficult, but um, it's not easy. It's no, not easy, it's but not. it's worth it. Like, if you really, like, put out what you expect from somebody, what you require from someone. Right. That can cut out a whole bunch of right. stuff. Okay. <laughs> like, from the door. It can. So, you know what's important in communication, too? Um is if you're talking to someone, even if it's about something you totally disagree about, but if you're giving them your attention, the worst thing to do when you're trying to communicate with somebody is for that person to walk away or that person to be, could be doing something else or anything like that. You need to be, you need, I need to know that you, I have your full attention mm -hmm. and you have mine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think yeah, that was a big pet peeve of mine too. Like, you on the phone, right. scrolling, texting. I need your right. undivided attention. Okay, right. I don't care if I'm talking about these cute shoes or just right. I need you to listen. Okay? Right, right. Like, it's so many distractions. Right, it is. Um, but yeah, like that's why. Like I, I feel as though I'm a good listener. Like I like to feel, make people feel like I'm really listening right. to what me they too. have to say. Me because too. if they, if it wasn't important to them, they wouldn't share with me. Right, you know. Right. So, um, and I do want to say another thing about this gener my generation is. We are terrible at communicating, period, across the board. But, like, when it comes to relationships, we don't want to seem pressed to communicate with anybody. We don't want to come off as sweating anybody or too concerned. We just want to play, like, the cool person or, That's so I don't terrible. know. It's, That's it's, so it's very awful. It's just, awful. And I, I'm not going to lie. I fell into the trap of that, too. But then I'm like, it, it just, it's a cycle. Like, okay, I don't get nowhere with nobody like that. You know, right. like. Right. Everybody always thinks somebody's running game. I mean, granted, we probably both are running game, but we're young, you know, be single. Hopefully they be single. I'm single. And so, right. Right. <laughs> but it's like a game of who could care the least. That's terrible. Yeah. So. That's terrible. But you said, so you said um, about asking questions. You said that, you know, you, you like to ask questions. Like, you just like to ask people questions. You know where I'm going with this, right? Oh, God, I don't know. Because <laughs> you, you always get on me about asking 50 oh, questions. No, Ma. You be asking 50 bazillion questions. If I don't, listen, y'all, if I don't have all my stuff aligned before on the phone with her, like, I don't call her. No, I know no. You'll call me and say something like, Mom, um, I got hit by a car today. Silence, silence. Okay, all right. So since you're not volunteering any more information, obviously I have to ask you. Uh, I just got hit by a car. No, I no. Process it. I need to know 
how the heck you got hit by a car? What happened? Know. Who hit you? I know. Where you were know you with at? The white green. With Why were you there? On the next street. <laughs> I'm telling you. And because I asked a lot of questions about everything, I know a lot more than. And then you guys come to me for answers. You come to me for answers. And that's the only, only reason so I know. You, you, I be OD. You, be, you be OD with the questions. Yeah. And that's why I don't be telling you some stuff sometimes because I don't have all the facts. And I'll be like, I know she's going to ask me a bunch of questions. That uh-huh. I don't know. That's fine. Get the facts and then let me know. Don't tell me yeah. one thing and it's a whole scenario behind it. Oh my it. gosh. No. Like if I just started talking to some guy, she'd be like, okay, so what does his mom do for a living? No, 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 no. <laughs> if I just got this guy's number and we just started texting today, she has all these questions. I, I don't know the dude. And I don't then, even know his last name yet. Whatever. Okay. I don't I'm just saying. Anyway. But, I mean, it's important to ask questions. It is. It, it is. It is. So, overall, new school or old school communication? Come on now, Erica. You got to give it to old school. You got to give it to I old gotta school. I got to give it to y'all. I okay. got to give it to y'all. Woo! And our, our listeners gave it to y'all too. Oh, they and did. I was surprised. Yes, I was see? very surprised. It's a trip because that's that's amazing. I think a lot of people now they they do it this way because this is the way it's done, but they don't necessarily like it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's how, that's how I feel like I am. Like I hate it. Yeah. I mean, like it's a lot of pros to it, but for the most part, I could do without that. Like, right. I am a face to face. I want to see you like uh, over overall. So fifty eight percent said old school, forty two percent said new school. It was close. I'm but still too close. I'm still too close. I mean, because it's like they're torn. Like, okay, maybe I'm supposed to like it because this is how it is, you know. Mm, maybe. But I'm old school all the way with communication, baby. Like yeah. Yeah. all of that. And it's terrible and it's, it's just such a headache <laughs> that it doesn't right. have to be right now one thing i can give new school about communication and this is the only thing i'm gonna give it give you guys is um back in the day there were things that just weren't talked about in families you know it just wasn't oh yeah you know and it, it could be things like um family secrets and you know things that you know they just didn't feel as though should have been communicated within the family. That's changed a lot, right. thank goodness, because that's not a good thing to keep those kind of family yeah. secrets and stuff. So oh, this is a first for you to say that. Yeah, yeah, I, it's definitely true. Um, you know, they didn't tell kids a lot of things because they were kids, and I get you know certain things are age appropriate, but eventually they should know that that's not their dad or that's you know that's not Aunt Maggie, that's Uncle Maggie, or you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. These are things that you know they they, they hit. So um, yeah. I think new school is doing a better job of being more open with the things that need to be told in family. So I think that right. that's that's right. a good thing. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. Okay, so now we're going to get into our game. Woo-hoo. The first time of everything tonight, we're doing. Zoom. We're doing a game. <laughs> so I'm really excited about the game because I came up with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Too bad you're going to lose. <laughs> so it's just going to be a game about communication. Um, what we're going to do is choose three people to call. My mom chooses three people, and then I choose three people. And if they answer, we get three points. So if her person answers, she gets three points. If my person answers, I get three points. If they don't answer, but they call me back within the time frame of the game, we get two points. If there's no answer, but they text us back, we get one point. Mm -hmm. And then if there's no answer at all, zero points. I think I got this one in the bag because I I know my three. Whatever. We'll see. Hmm. You got to tell who you call in too. Oh, dang, I do? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So you want to go first or you want me to go first? I'm going to go first. Old, old, I'll, you know, after you, old person. All right, here we go. It's going to be on speaker. You ready? Okay. I am calling my husband. <laughs> You're a cheater. Eric, you better answer the freaking phone. 
Hold on. <laughs> Come on, Eric. What the yeah. Hey, honey, listen, this is just this game. Thank you for answering. I'll call you back, okay? All right. <laughs> You're already right. like, what? Give me my points. Give me my three points. Okay, you got three points. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ooh, I don't know. Eric's answering. That might be a little spin on things. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna call Justice. That's my best friend, guys. Come on, Justice. I hope she on a date. <laughs> oh, there she go. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Oh, hey. <laughs> I was just, we're just playing a game for a generation conversation. Thanks for answering, though. I'm going to call y'all back. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. So okay. you, you hit two for one or something? What was that? I mean, hey. No, you only get one credit for that. Bye. All right, fine. Okay. No, I'm kidding. I'll, I'll take the three. Okay, you're up. Now, you know my people are kind of old, so they might be asleep. Let me see. Let me try. I'm going to try Auntie Crystal. Okay. Come on, Auntie Crystal. Let's go, Auntie Crystal. Hopefully she's not sleeping. Uh, Dang, come on, Auntie Crystal. Six, seven, two, five, nine, five. <laughs> Five, eight, eight. Ah, your sister. No, it went straight to voicemail. That means something. She blocked you. No, it means her phone is dead. I should have known better. So, I okay, I could still get two points if she calls me back, right? Within the time frame of the game. Fine, go ahead. Finished, you see that it's a missed call. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Am I going to call? I know. Well, uh... So it's gonna lose. Win, win, lose, lose. I'm gonna call. I think Boosie. You gonna okay? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, Boosie. I hope she had to work the late shift. <laughs> hey, Boosie. <laughs> Come on, Boosie. FaceTime will go on forever. Wow. Oh, wow. Don't boosie. Hey, we even now. <laughs> oh, the score is tied three to three. All right. For your uh, last person. Come on, it's 843. That means I should be able to call. Uh, all right, Auntie Dot. Oh, gosh. I don't know about that one. <laughs> what you say? Is she sleep? She is knocked out. No, she Trey probably going to answer her phone. Well, love somebody answer. Hey, come on, Auntie Dot. Here we go. Come on, Auntie Dot. Come on, Auntie Dot. Yes. Okay. Hey, honey. Uh -huh. Listen, we're playing a game on Generation Conversation. I just needed you to answer the phone. Thank you very much. I'll call you back. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Uh, it's okay. It's on you. Okay. Your last person. Okay. If they don't answer, I win. So, I'm going to call Alyssa. She, okay. She's going to answer. She's doing hair. <laughs> She's still going to answer. <laughs> hey, hey, girl. I'm just calling you. We're playing a game for Generation Conversation. I'm going to call you back. <laughs> She's so stupid. I'll call you back, girl. <laughs> All 
All right, so we tied. Can you hear her? Yeah, a little, not really. Uh, All so, right, we tied. So now what? So now it's sudden death. Sudden death. So, <laughs> sudden death. <laughs> so we have a person who never answers the phone. <laughs> so, how are we going to do this, Ma? Mm. Um,. If I call him, do you want to use and he answers? I okay. win because I went first. Uh, if, okay, but if he doesn't answer, and if I should I call him? Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, we didn't tell him who this person was. Oh, right, <laughs> <laughs> this person is Kendall Lewis. He Never answers his phone. He makes it so thick. This would be the truth to tell. This would be oh, amazing. God. Here we go. <laughs> but I will get two points because he'll probably text me back and say, I'm at practice or I'm at study hall or whatever. Just call a boy. Here we go. Come on, Kendall. Do it for your mommy. Mm. It rang once. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. You're not going to answer? We're on the third time. Never answers the phone. Mm -mm. I've reached the voicemail box See? of Four. Okay. Stand. I can't stand him. But <laughs> all I know is he better not answer the phone when you call him. That's all I know. That would be like, oh, I'm shutting this whole thing down. Go. And with the difference between what we're doing, you're calling people, I'm FaceTiming people. So, you know. That makes it worse. You should answer a phone call before you answer a FaceTime. Hmm. New school, old school. FaceTiming him. Mm. Dang, Kendall. Wow. I'm not going to answer for either one of us. Come on. Dang, Crystal can't even text me back because she probably don't even know our call. See, if Boosie. Dang. Okay. So we gotta we gotta wrap it at a tie. I guess. All right. You know our default other person is Dante. I know. I was thinking that you wanna. I'm gonna try him. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he thinks it's about work. Come on, Dante. All right. Come on, Dante. Answer the phone. Come on. If he answers, I win. It's over. Come on, Dante. You ain't doing nothing. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Nobody answers their phone. Here's my question. Everybody has their phone. Doing everything. Oh, my God. Go ahead. You can call them. Okay. How everybody had a phone and doing stuff, but nobody answers their phone call. I bet you if we text them, they'll answer. Right. That proves the point that we've been making. Okay. Should I call him or text him? No, call him because I didn't text. I'm about to FaceTime. He's going to be like, why is Sherry and Erica calling me? Mm -hmm. He might answer because he might be because I don't know. He's probably sleeping. How many times did it rain? This is like the sixth time. We got some raggy okay. people. <laughs> this is raggedy. And nobody texted us back. It's raggedy. Nobody. Nobody. Well, guys. <laughs> we just go nothing. <laughs> This was a fail. 
old school has adapted the new school everything. Well, new school, we suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been, that was fun anyway. Yes, it was. Thanks for people for, for participating. They're going to listen to this and be like, oh my God, why you didn't tell me? <laughs> I, I'm never calling Kendall again. I'm never calling Dante again. And I'm never calling Auntie Crystal ever again. You're not going to call your sister again? I'm going to call her and tell her I'm not calling her. Okay. And hopefully she answers. <laughs> well, it's been good. Thank you, guys, as always. Yes, thank you, guys. This has been fun. Talking about communication. Go read some books. Get some knowledge. Because, you know... It's not, it's not, I guess it's not something you're born with. It's not. You do have to learn it. Um, but it's important. And I feel like everybody should learn it. Yes. So, yes, yes, yes. There's that. Y'all be blessed. Have a great rest of the week. Great yes. holiday season. Make the best of the time you have with your loved ones. Yes. We love you. We love y'all. Peace. Peace.